Hey there and welcome to Jeep Sheep TV. Today it's really hot in my garage. Man's not hot. Ta-da! Today we're actually going to be talking about the Mighty YJ and the shift points on the automatic transmission, which are at the moment not too desirable. Don't forget this, you need these. And a star pattern. All right, so we're just gonna jump right in here. First, I'm gonna show you real quick how you communicate with your transmission. How does the transmission know what the engine is doing? And to do this, it's a lot easier if you remove your air box. So we're gonna do that real quick. We've already loosened this. And I'll take this guy off, like so. And then you can just set that to the side. All right, so you have two cables that go to your throttle body. This one here uh, is from your foot and your foot pushes down on a pedal, which pulls this cable, which opens your throttle body. That's how air gets into your engine. If you didn't know that by now, you probably shouldn't be messing with your transmission. Um, anyway, so then this second one here, this actually comes from your transmission, and it goes to this same spot on the throttle body, or similar spot. And uh, as your foot moves the throttle body, it pulls this cable. This is called a kick down cable. And that's uh, very important. Uh, it can also be considered a TV cable. I think it's throttle valve, not television. So anyway, this goes to your transmission. We're gonna go and we're gonna take a look at that next. For this next part, we are under the car and we're gonna take a look at these linkages. All right, so this one right up here this is your shifter linkage. This is you with your shifter on the steering column. You're selecting park, neutral, whatever. That's this guy right here. And he goes, so we can get a better view. He goes here and he rotates this mechanism here, which I'm not able to do at the moment. And I don't want to because I don't want to pull it out of park and have it squish me. All right, rotates this mechanism. Now, your cable, let's see if you can see this, right here, see this little cable right here? It's a little difficult. This is the exact same cable that goes up to your throttle body. Or when you rotate your throttle body by pushing down on the gas pedal, you are pulling this kick down cable right here. See that? It's pretty neat. It's rotating that mechanism, which is in turn going to communicate to the transmission that either needs to downshift or shift later. So back up to the top, let's look at how you can adjust that mechanism. Yes, yeah, so let's talk about this guy right here for just a moment. This is an adjuster of sorts. Now yours may be really stiff, yours may not be. Mine's not really that stiff. And what this does is it actually allows you to slide this plastic portion in and out. And so what's interesting about that is that's actually going to control how your transmission interprets your throttle position. Okay. So what they say is they say to take this and they say to adjust it all the way back, like so, and then to go and step on your pedal and go all the way to the floor. And that's gonna pull this to the correct location. So I'm gonna jump inside the car and do exactly that. All right, now you should have heard it pop. And that pop is this actually sliding inside here and that's adjusting. That's how you self adjust this. But this engine, or should I say this transmission, shifts at 2,500 to 3,000, depending on the load. If you're giving it a lot of gas, it'll shift about three to 3,500. If you're lucky, it'll pull up to 4,000 RPM if you're really on it. Um, but most of the time it's in the 2,500 to 3,000 range, which is fine, except 3,500 is really where it should be shifting for maximum power 
And the guys that tune this, we're going for maximum fuel efficiency because Jeeps are notoriously bad on fuel. So what we're gonna try and do today, and I'm not gonna guarantee any success whatsoever, what we're gonna try and do today is we're going to try and adjust when it shifts. And then we're gonna talk about what that's actually doing and some of the trade-offs of doing so. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about how this is going to theoretically work. So at the moment, your transmission is understanding that your throttle is closed because it is. There's no one stepping on the pedal, nothing's happening. Now, if you want to convince it to shift later or to downshift sooner, i.e. drive more aggressively, you need to convince the transmission that you are indeed driving more aggressively. So how you're going to want to do that is you're going to want to spoof this into thinking that you are in a different throttle position than you actually are. You can do this by retracting this mechanism here. Again, you push on the button and you pull back. Now I am actually fully retracted. So theoretically, I should be spoofing the engine into thinking that I I'm driving more aggressively. Now there is a drawback to this. As I showed you before, you adjust this mechanism by pulling it all the way back and then going full throttle. And doing so, it pops it forward. It has a slip mechanism to allow it to pop forward to correct on the fly, which is going to be problematic in this case because you're trying to spoof it. So the only thing I can think of at the moment, and go ahead, I urge you to comment down below and tell me what you think. The only thing I can think of at the moment is to indeed pull it back and then not go full throttle, which I'm telling you is very difficult in a four cylinder YJ. Now, another thing that you can do to spoof this is you can shim, you can shim this area here and what I mean by that is you can actually take this cable you can pull it out oh that, you can pull it out and then you can put something here on the other side in place to then spoof it some more now that's all fine and dandy however when you hit that full throttle it's going to move this mechanism yet again and so it all kind of goes back to if you go full throttle, it's going to self adjust itself back to factory parameters. So yeah, that is a difficulty. Now, obviously there is an alternative to this and that is to shift manually. You have the selector on your steering column. You can choose when it shifts by turning that. Obviously it's more convenient if it does it on its own but you do have that option. All right, I am choosing to spoof or trick this with a small piece of metal here. And I'll explain that, first of all, my uh, kickdown cable is becoming very frayed and has become quite stretched out over the years. So I am at the edge of my adjustment range. Therefore, it's best for me to do it this way because I actually have some wiggle room. Secondly, I'm more able to measure the distance, uh, or at least it's more easy for me to measure the distance here for me to tell you what I'm doing. This is just a hair, honestly, just a hair over a quarter of an inch. And so I'm going to drive the Jeep and I'm gonna report back to you how this change my sh changes my shift points. And then we're going to talk about why you may or may not want to be doing this. All right, so I drove around with the first little bit, which, and I, I said it wrong. I said a quarter of an inch. It is an eighth of an inch. So it's quite small. And uh, so I drove around with that, and there was very little change. Most of the shift points were the same. Then I added a second little bit, which I'll try to rotate this so you can see it. There you go. Now you can see the second little bit in there. That is actually a quarter of an inch. And so I got three-eighths of an inch difference here. Now, that was a big change, but there is something that I need to talk to you about that is the downfall to this. 
Okay, here is what we have learned so far. We have learned that the kickdown cables can be adjusted at the throttle body. We also know that the throttle body controls how the transmission interprets your driving and it does that by pedal position or the position of that butterfly valve. Now that's very important for this next part because what we did is we tricked the transmission into thinking that we had a more aggressive or more open throttle position than we actually did, thus telling the transmission that we are wanting to accelerate and it then shifts later. It also encourages the transmission to downshift sooner, which is really great. Now, when I went ahead and put in the eighth inch shim, not a lot happened, but then I put in the quarter inch shim to get a grand total of three eighths inch difference in interpreted throttle position, I saw huge improvements, in, in my opinion, in shift points. It shifted much, much later. In conservative driving, it would pull up to 3000 RPM instead of 2500. In moderate, it would pull to 3500 before shifting. And in aggressive, I got it to shift at 5000 RPM, which was really quite cool. Uh, and something else that I was not expecting whatsoever is when decelerating, it would actually downshift. So if I'm coming to a stop, it would go from third to second and I would get some engine braking and then second to first and I would get some more engine braking, which is super convenient if you live in a high traffic area like I do, engine braking is just kind of nice. Now there is a huge major downfall to this. Since you're spoofing the transmission's interpretation of your throttle position, you're also moving that kick down point. The kick down would be that point, and you can definitely feel it in the gas pedal. It's that point where you're telling the transmission, I need to downshift, I need to downshift. Now I have to accelerate for whatever reason. So that kick down point typically happens just before wide open throttle. So you're going to get you know, near wide open throttle, and then you push on a little bit more, you open that butterfly valve all the way, and it downshifts. Now the problem with this is in third gear or your final drive on the highway. As you're going down the highway, in this four cylinder Jeep, you typically are pedal to the floor to maintain speed. And your top speed is completely dependent upon how much air you can give the engine. Now, being that you have to give the engine all of the air to maintain speed, in my case, that speed is anywhere from 75 to 80 miles an hour almost all the time. That's just the way it is around here, or it's zero. And so when I moved it three eighths of an inch, what I found was I was hitting that kick down cable quite a bit sooner and I couldn't hold the throttle open wide enough to hit 75 miles an hour, I was stuck at 70. Now you're saying that who cares, you know, just go all the way. Well, when you push past the kickdown cable, you force the transmission to downshift. When it downshifts at 70 to second gear, it hits red line and then it shifts you back up. So it's in second gear for a grand total of like half a second and it puts you back into third. Now you're probably thinking, okay, I'm back into third and I'm at that wide open throttle, but no, if you were to hold it there, it would go back to second and then back to third and then back to second and then back to third and it would just keep doing it, which is really not good at all and not remotely comfortable as a driving experience goes. So now I believe there's got to be a happy medium. What I did was too much. Now we know that an eighth of an inch was too little. So I'm going to try a quarter of an inch and I'm going to use it on my commute to work tomorrow to see if I still get that cool downshift that I had before, or if I can hit my top speed of that 75, 80 miles an hour. Okay, you guys, it's time for me to report on what I've seen. Now, remember I left the little metal uh, spacer on my throttle valve cable that was roughly a thickness of a quarter of an inch. And I've been driving this way for a couple of days now and on my way to and from work. And it does still do the downshift thing, which I have found to be really quite cool. 
uh, especially if you're taking a corner, you, you slow down quite a bit, it downshifts, and then you're in second gear for the remainder of that corner. So you can accelerate if you need to. Uh, very helpful, especially if you're trying to turn before oncoming traffic. Um, so you're not forcing them to slow down quite a bit. Now, it, I have done a remarkable amount of research to create this video, more than I have ever done for a video. So I hope it doesn't go unnoticed. Um, but they're, the only things that we really need to think about, to be worried about, are, as I've said a few times now, uh, the, the position of that kickdown. Keep in mind that it appears your throttle valve cable serves two purposes, one being uh, communicating through a cable to a hydraulic valve in the transmission what your throttle position is, and also the, the second one being at wide open throttle communicating the kickdown command, which forces your transmission to shift into a lower gear. Um, the other thing is in the newer model Jeeps, this is a 1994, I believe it was maybe 93, uh, don't quote me on that, but they switched from a hydraulic lockup torque converter to an electronic one that receives signals from the powertrain control module or PCM. Now, this is something that I was worried about today while driving because it appeared that my RPMs were a little bit higher than they should have been for my speed. So my wonder was whether or not uh, my spoofing has caused an issue with this torque converter lockup. Uh, but from what I've understood, the powertrain control module does not know what gear you're in because there is no feedback from your transmission as it is mostly hydraulically controlled. So my understanding is that your powertrain control module is seeing your speed, maybe some engine load, and then that's how it determines whether or not to lock the transmission. I'm hoping to make another video later where we can troubleshoot if that mechanism is indeed failing because it's something that I would like to know personally. But overall, of course, Modifying your transmission or modifying how your tr transmission acts is a dangerous thing and so take precaution I have actually really enjoyed driving the Jeep. It shifts a little bit harder because I am shifting later but I'm able to accelerate quite a bit more and uh, with being able, reducing to that quarter inch uh, Spacer I have been able to maintain higher speeds on the highway. I might reduce it just a little bit further uh, because I do a lot of highway driving, but overall I'm very pleased with the performance and the downshifting was a complete surprise to me and that is a huge bonus. All right, as I said before, I did quite a bit of research for this video. I can, I'm posting down below uh, three links that I found very useful uh, when understanding what transmission I have as well as what's inside of it. There are various pictures and drawings that are quite good and the articles are written by incredibly knowledgeable people. What I have learned um, that I'm quite pleased to report is that the transmission in this Jeep is a tried and true transmission that Chrysler has been putting in cars for a very long time and uh, apparently AMC saw these transmissions, saw the value of them and put them in the Jeeps back when AMC owned Jeep and then of course being a Chrysler transmission it translated into Chrysler ownership so everything I've read says that these are powerful transmissions they're very reliable they also say that there are some tune-ups and maintenance that uh, come along with these transmissions and that is also included in the links below I'm hoping that maybe I can make future videos on those because that was something that I learned through this experience as well all right now let's do something kind of fun here because I don't actually know what is normal for this Jeep. I just know what it's been in the past. So if you could go ahead and you could comment below, I want to know two things from you. One is when does your automatic transmission decide to shift normally in normal everyday driving? And then the second one is what is your top speed that you can hit reliably? I'm sure there's been that one time you hit 85 um, but I'm talking on a daily commute, depending on wind, depending on weather, what is the top speed you can hit reliably? I know for me, it was around the 80 miles an hour. It just took forever to get there. Then I re-geared to 4.11s to accommodate for my 31 inch tires. 
and I actually very rarely hit 80 miles an hour now, which you would think is kind of a downfall, but I can get to that 75, 76, 78 miles an hour quite a lot faster, and I'm putting less load on the engine. I am turning higher RPMs, but that's all part of the game. So go ahead and comment below. I'd love to know when your transmission shifts and what your reliable top speed is. So we can kind of compare apples to apples what I'm doing to what you're doing. All right, you guys, let's just drop it in selfie mode real quick and talk. In conclusion, if you do a lot of off highway driving and you wish that your Jeep would shift a little bit later so you can have better acceleration, then modifying the shift points is a great thing for you. Now, if you do a lot of highway driving where you need to hit some higher speeds like that 70, 80 miles an hour, then doing this is not for you because you're gonna need as much air getting into your engine in third gear as possible. So it's 100% up to preference, but if you have been wondering this for a while, I hope this video was very helpful to you. If you like videos that are similar to this one, hit the subscribe button, no question about it. Uh, hit the bell next to the subscribe button, you'll get notified when I make a video, which happens every single week. Even more reason to hit that subscribe button, tell your friends, share on forums, do whatever you gotta do. I'd love to see you back here, but in the meantime, I'll see you on the trail.